my post was about parents who don't let the kids, you know, see their family because they decided they don't like their family. And kids usually, you know, you don't end up doing too well with that. You know, and you don't end up on the right side of history with that one. It's really common estrangement, you know, and if there was abuse, certainly, but there's not always abuse. You know, people end up saying, why did my difficult parents not let me meet my cousins? That's what they end up saying. So you heard it here first, you know, and if you click on that link in a post that I had just posted, you know, people don't really know what to do because there's like two competing things philosophically, like in the ether. There's the kids on a pedestal, everything, do everything for the kids. But then there's also never do anything you don't want to do. So then, you know, when something comes in between those, it's like, wait, what do I do? What do I do? So what you do is you think for yourself, right? And you try to think about your actual values and live in accordance with them. Because, see, in this case, it's like the woman was saying that she doesn't really like her brother-in-law, so she doesn't want to see him. And that means that her kids can't meet his kids and they're like the same age. But why can't you power through something for a couple of times a year for the sake of your kids developing a relationship? That to me seems like something you might be able to do. They live two hours away. So this is not a flight to Australia, you know? And then people are like, oh no, no, uh, you can't because you don't want to. That's like just the argument. Like literally you shouldn't do anything that makes you uncomfortable ever because then you die, I think. So that's not true. You don't die if you do something uncomfortable. You're not putting yourself in harm's way. You're getting your feelings hurt. And you know what? If you're the kind of person who gets your feelings hurt by this, you probably get your feelings hurt by a lot. So you're never really on the right side of history there. And I've never heard somebody say something like, I'm really glad that my kid never met their family in retrospect. All those things that I got my feelings hurt about were really, really important. I now agree with that at 60 as well. And I think I did exactly the right thing. No, people are like, why did I put my ego, you know, what did it even matter? You know, why did I do these things? I felt like they were so important at the time and they weren't. So generally what I try to tell parents is think about your children as experts on your behavior because they are like, think about how well you think, you know, your parents, right? That's how well your kids know you. So if your kids have a problem with something that you do, if your kids think that you're self-interested, if your kids think you're difficult, if your kids think you're narcissistic, you know, it, it, where there's smoke, there's fire. So you probably want to interrogate that. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people go around saying, oh, my parent was narcissistic. Now my kid tells me I'm narcissistic, but I'm right and they're wrong. Does that make any sense statistically? How could that, like, what a coincidence, right? And so what I tell people, and I work with estrangement a lot. I'm one of the first hits that come up when you look up estrangement psychologists. I was interviewed by the APA in the monitor. And so I got a lot of, um, <laughs> as soon as you get interviewed by the APA monitor on something, then like everybody who needs like a, a quote contacts you. So I mean, whatever, but at least it's something I actually work with is estrangement. I work with it a lot. And what I always say is like, you can still maintain your positive memories of your kid's childhood while validating that how they felt is real because how you feel about your parents is real, right? Like you really think that they did X wrong or Y wrong or whatever. And that's how your kids feel about you. How could it possibly make sense otherwise to completely dismiss your child's feedback about you while thinking that you're right about your own parents? It just doesn't really make any sense. So the parents that are able to repair estrangements are the ones that are able to have a real epiphany, a real epiphany. And they say, oh my God, they're right. I did do this, this, and this. Doesn't mean I'm a malicious, horrible person, but it does mean they're right. I did this, this, and this, that they always been saying that I did. And the way that they're able to make that epiphany frequently is by saying, oh, it's like how I think of my parents, which of course is right. So then why wouldn't theirs be right? And it's not like your kids don't, um, it, it's not like they can't have their own problems, right? And of course they could struggle with their own mental health. But where there's smoke, there's fire. There's plenty of kids with mental health issues and young adults with mental health issues health issues that do not repudiate their parents. And 
I understand that the culture is more pro estrangement than it ever was. And obviously that's a contributing variable. Still, most people do not become estranged from their parents. So even with all of these factors, sociological, psychological, etc., you still got to think, why are my kids the ones that have a problem with me? And maybe not every, every adult and every kid, because there are things that transcend everything. So like almost every child of a certain age is like addicted to their phone, right? Almost everyone, but not almost everyone has horrible problems with their parents when they're an adult. Almost every person thinks having a baby is stressful. Not everyone uses that as a reason to be estranged from a parent. You just got to think about it, you know, and most people will opt out and they'll press, you know, X and they won't think about it. But you can use this framework to think about anything and to get a wider perspective on anything. If I think you would say, if I think I'm right in my judgment about other people, why am I so quick to say that other people are not right in their judgment about me? And you can use this about your spouse, too. You definitely know that your spouse is X and Y and Z that are bad things that you wish they would work on. So then why do you say no if they say you are A and B and C that you need to work on? It, like, it, it just kind of does not make sense, right? And so it's, it's important. It's a very, very important thing. And if anybody's watching, you should definitely send your likes and your loves and you can give me your comments. And I could answer questions on this topic or any other topic, but this is a massively important perspective shift for people, for parents, for partners. If I think I'm right about another person that I'm in a relationship with of some sort, why do I think they're so wrong about me? How can that make any logical sense, right? It can't, unless you're really just trying to save face. And saving face is a massive human motivation. And if you were raised in a house where nobody ever owned their own shit, then saving face is going to be a tremendous motivator for you, you know, and therapy can really help with the desire to save face and to see yourself as uniformly positive, even in the face of other people having problems with you. And if you can learn to see yourself more objectively, then relationship problems really go away. Not like, not like poof, like Houdini, but they can, that you can work on that. What most kids, by the way, who are estranged from their parents or who have problems with their parents want is literally just recognition and validation. You're right. There were times in your childhood I was selfish. That alone would repair many, many estrangements. But people won't say it. You know, they just won't say it. It's too hard for them to do. It gives them too much shame, you know, and they've built a whole identity on being a good person to the point that they can't say, maybe I wasn't a good person. And that's that if thinking about it, switching it to being like, oh my God, I have been running away from looking at more unsavory parts of my behavior or character. So of course my child is responding poorly. Of course they are. The same as I would when I felt my parents weren't seeing the truth on something.